I like Corey Anderson, but you just beat Corey Anderson. Sit down, young man. MMA is one of the most unpredictable sports in the world, and for many, its greatest stories came from willing comers taking fights on a few weeks' notice. This is a list of fighters who stepped up at the 11th hour, from unlikely champions to fading stars catching a second win. Welcome to INC, and these are five of the greatest short-notice MMA fights. UFC light heavyweight champ Daniel Cormier is considered one of MMA's all-time legends, but few remember it took a short notice fight to launch the future Hall of Famer into the sport's mainstream. Back in 2011, Cormier was an MMA rookie competing in Strike Force's heavyweight division, winning his first three fights with a promotion, including a decision over UFC title challenger Jeff Monson. After Alistair Overeem pulled out through injury, Cormier was drafted on five weeks' notice to compete in Strike Force's heavyweight Grand Prix, where he took on 16-2 Bigfoot Silver in the semi-final. Bigfoot came into the fight off a win over MMA legend Fedor Emelianenko, and with a huge height and weight advantage, was expected to make easy work of DC. Rather than relying on his wrestling, Cormier chose to stand with Bigfoot, troubling with quick right hands before dropping the Brazilian in the opening minute of the first. Bigfoot had no answer for Cormier's speed and power, leading to a predictable outcome just three minutes later. And a minute 11 left in the first, the jab from Cormier! Oh my God. Although held in high regard, Cormier's win sent shockwaves through the MMA community and helping scratched the Olympian's rep as a lay and prey expert. Cormier proved the fight wasn't a fluke by beating Josh Barnett in the final and setting him on the way to becoming one of the sport's most respected figures. Few lightweight fighters could hold a candle to Benson Henderson. For over five years, the Colorado native reigned supreme over many of the division's greats, but it was his rare foray outside 155 that gave the former UFC champ his finest hour. After losing his belt to Anthony Pettis, Henderson struggled to find his feet in the UFC, falling out of title contention after straight losses to Donald Cerrone and Rafael Dos Anjos. When Stephen Thompson pulled out with a rib fracture, Henderson used the opportunity to switch to welterweight, stepping in on two weeks' notice to take on Brandon Thatch at fight 960. Thatch had won 11 of 12 pro fights and destroyed both Paolo Thiago and Justin Edwards inside a round. And coming a month after his Cerrone loss, many expected the same to happen to Henderson. Early on, the fight went with the bookmakers, as Thatch used hard straights and wrestling to dominate the undersized Henderson throughout the first two rounds. By the third, however, Henderson's veteran guile came to the fore, flicking backhanded jabs at Thatch as the 6-2 giant started to fade. In the middle of the fourth, Henderson found his opening, taking Thatch to the ground before locking a rear naked choke to claim an impressive upset. Thatch is winching. There's the That's tag. It. Benson Henderson does it. He comes into Broomfield and wins his UFC welterweight debut. How about it? Henderson would go 2-1 at welterweight before returning to 155, while Thatch would lose his next three fights before being cut by the UFC. TJ Dillashaw's short notice fight remains one of the most dominant in UFC history. Since appearing on the 14th season of The Ultimate Fighter, Dillashaw had muddled in the UFC's mid-card, going 5-2 and two in the promotion, with his biggest showing being a decision loss to Rafael Asuncao. At UFC 173, Dillashaw was set to make his PPV debut against Takia Mizugaki, but after Unsun Sao pulled out with a rib issue, Dillashaw was drifted to the main event to take on 32-1 and bantamweight champion Henan Barao. Dillashaw, however, was unfazed by the occasions, tagging Barao throughout the first before a huge strike late in the first set the tone for the rest of the fight. Oh! Big shot trying to finish! Wow! From then on, Dillashaw took full control, outpacing Barral throughout as the Brazilian grew frustrated at Dillashaw's constant movement. 
By the end of the fourth, Barrow was bloodied, bruised and exhausted as Dillashaw wrapped a career-defining win in the middle of the final round. And it's all over! T.J. Dillashaw of the new UFC Bantamweight Champion! What an incredible performance! You want to talk about a kid rising to the occasion! Dillashaw would defend his belt against fellow short-notice fighter Joe Soto before disposing Barrow again at Fox 16, in doing so cementing his place as one of the stars of 135. Some fighters use short-notice matches as a means of fast-tracking to the sport's top level, and no example is better than former WEC champion Jamie Varner. After ending his tenure with three straight losses, Varner was one of the few WEC alumni not signed by the UFC in 2010, instead bouncing around smaller promotions, amassing a 3-1 record. When Evan Dunham dropped off the card with injury, Varner made an unlikely return to the UFC to take on Edson Barboza at UFC 146. Barboza ended the fight as one of the sport's highest rated talents, unbeaten in his first 10 fights the last of which a highlight real knockout of Terry Etim four months earlier. Barboza started the fight on the front foot, targeting Varner's leg throughout and leaving Varner unable to press throughout the first minute. Eventually, Varner was able to start his striking game, rocking Barboza in the middle of the first and maintaining the pressure in a fight later voted upset of the year. Varner trying to be the first man to beat Barboza. Big right hand for Varner, looking for a triumph Turn to the UFC! Hammer fist, it is all over! After the fight, Varner's UFC tenure would prove enthralling but unsuccessful, going 1 to 5 in his next six before retiring in 2014 with 21 wins and 11 losses. The most infamous short notice fighter is UFC alumni Seth Petrozelli. Petrozelli first came to prominence on the second season of The Ultimate Fighter only to be cut by the UFC after losing his first two fights with the promotion. In 2007, Petrozelli signed with Elite XC and was set to make his company debut on the undercard Kimbo Slice versus Ken Shamrock. When Shamrock suffered a cut over his eye in the warm-up, Petrozelli was drafted on four hours' notice to take on Slice in the main event. Many saw Seth as nothing more than a sacrificial goat for Kimbo, but with the capacity crowd and millions watching on CBS, the goat fought back. Slice goes down! Slice in trouble! Oh my goodness! Slice gets pulled in out! And they stop it! In just 14 seconds, Petrozelli launched himself into the media spotlight and helping derail the hype train of one of MMA's most popular stars. During a radio interview, Petrozelli suggested Elite XC promoters offered him money to keep the fight standing, believing Kimbo's chances of winning would improve due to his lack of skill on the ground. Although cleared of wrongdoing, the scandal proved irreversible for Elite XC and with huge debts and sponsors falling by the wayside, the company folded just two weeks later. Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now! And now time for a few honourable mentions. This soccer mom was pulled from the crowd to fight Bellator flyweight champion Alima McFarlane. Anderson Silva jumped off a hospital bed to take on Daniel Cormier at UFC 200. Nate Diaz stepped in on 10 days notice to fight some Irish guy at UFC 196. This is the INC and thank you for watching.